Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think that's that's the big thing, right? Mm. I th- it, it's maybe just programmed into our genetics or something to be afraid of trying something new, jumping in, right. you're going to mess up, you're going to make mistakes. Uh, and it's going to cost you money if you do. You yeah. Know? So that's, that's you know, there's, 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 there's a, but, but again, I think that, you know, as if we can kind of pull it, mm-hmm. you know, instead of push it, I think that'll work uh, better in the long run. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm going to piggyback a little bit on Steve again, is that we knew all that going in because mm-hmm. Bitcoin is like the, the Model T, it's the Ford, it's the first car. It's also the most adopted. It's got the best name recognition. Everybody's heard of it. But it also is very low tech. It, it's very hard to use. It's very unforgiving. Um, when we built Tuck, uh, Tusk, we went. We, we designed it to be a lot easier to use. And we're going to be adding a lot of features over the next year, um, especially on our roadmap, to make it super easy to use. So one of the things that are complicated when you're moving um, Bitcoin around or some of these other types of cryptocurrencies is you have this long number of, <laughs> you know, which is the wallet address, which is really okay. cut complicated and mm-hmm. unforgiving um, on our blockchain we have human readable names and account names so you can set up you know uh silentium or whatever um, silencers or whatever is your account name so you're not going to make a mistake with this long gibber- gibberish encryption hash as they mm-hmm. call it which is the wallet address um so i think uh, over time one of the other things that's kind of unforgiving is that if you lose your keys to your account in crypto you're toast um we're going to be working on a system for key recovery um and where that's a ways out because to do that right it's going to be very difficult Mm -hmm. um but we're also working on digital id integration with project hydro um which we think might be helpful to pre-fill out say 4473 forms not that we're tracking what's on the 4473 but if someone comes to you and say i want to pay with tusk um and we haven't built this yet but we're working on it um because we just announced this partnership with this other crypto project that mm-hmm. um, so someone brings their wallet over and they can just scan it at the retailer and automatically downloads their 4473 data um, and fills out their form because there's a lot of mistakes with 4473 forms um, that can be a compliance nightmare for FFLs. Um, and in addition, we're looking at doing some things like escrow. Uh, features. So, um, like Steve was mentioning, that if you make a mistake sending something, uh, you know, that it's unforgiving, we're going to work on that too. So, as a crypto project, one of the things that we like to do, which is hard with a lot of other crypto projects, is we're trying to bring like a basket of resources um, to bear that. Uh, any retailer can use to integrate accepting crypto. So, that's not just like, you know, the, uh, you know, this is how this is your account, but how do you deal with the tax piece? Because, you know, uh, crypto accounting is very different than normal dollar accounting. Thank you, Mr. IRS. Um, uh, and how do you get in and out of it with crypto? So hmm. how do you get your initial cryptos? So another thing we're doing, we're going to be partnering with an ATM network. So for certain retailers, not only we're going to bring them into Tusk, um, but we're going to bring in a crypto ATM into their lobby, um, which may help people get crud, pay them with Tusk. But on top of that, the idea is that if the retailer wants to accept Tusk, um, it'll actually make transaction time shorter for them to receive their money. So for right now, with normal credit card processing, you might need to rate, wait anywhere from three to seven days, typically, for Visa to give you your money. Okay. Um, well, with crypto, once the account is approved and verified, you actually have your money. It's already in your wallet. So mm-hmm. on Tusk, our um, our confirmation times are about two and a half seconds on average. So so think of it this way for like a mom and pop retailer. The, um, uh, they want to accept Tusk um, for a purchase. Um, they have a crypto ATM in their lobby. The minute that uh, transaction is approved, uh, they can literally walk over to the ATM and get cash out of their ATM. And so the idea is that it could actually increase cash flow because you don't have to wait for that ACH from Visa or MasterCard or you know um, American Express. Hmm. So it actually speeds things up. In our network, um, uh, the, the transaction fee is only a half a percent. 
Uh, and so it's even way cheaper than credit cards. It's just as fast as credit cards. But getting people on board, it is a little clunkier and harder. And so some of the things we're working on over the next year is being able to make it really easy for people like retailers to actually onboard their customers. So kind of our strategy for getting people to use our crypto is we're going to be training retailers and educating them and giving them all the education materials so that they got and basically discount and incentivize their own customers to pay them in Tusk. It eliminates their chargeback risk because there's no chargebacks on Tusk at all, which is a big problem for a lot of gun retailers, especially the custom gun builders out there when people get impatient after a year waiting for their, you know, mm-hmm. unicorn <laughs> lollipop Glock 19, yeah. right? Right. Uh, so sometimes they do chargebacks, and because mm-hmm. uh, the gun industry is considered red flag, they don't get appeals mm-hmm. um, for those chargebacks typically. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you figure just on the economics, a half a percent transaction fee, no chargeback, instant settlement, so you can cruise your cash flow, and it's an insurance policy against debanking and being deplatformed in case Visa you know, decides to partner with uh, – Biden and uh, shut you off mm-hmm. um, from that expensive thing. And on top of that, there's no monthly maintenance fees. So I know a lot of retailers in the gun space, and this is why um, they're really interested in, in crypto is because, and they have a hard time with credit card processing, because not only are they paying higher you know, um, per transaction fees on those credit cards, but typically what they're finding is they're also having to pay monthly maintenance fees just to have the account open. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why a lot of retailers want to go to third-party payment providers like PayPal and stuff because they're not paying a monthly typically. Mm-hmm. Um, and they don't have to pay a monthly with us. So uh, just on the economics of it, it's worth trying to go through that learning curve. Okay. Um, and over time, that learning curve is going to get smaller because we're, we're working really hard as a project because I am not a developer. I am an entrepreneur, and I, my first focus is making this as easy as possible for people to use. And and it's going to take another 6, 12 months to get there because we know all the work we need to do to get there. But I can tell you that is our main focus of bringing cryptocurrency and decentralized technology to the industries that need it most. And right now, it's the, it's the gun industry in the United States. Okay. So let me do this because we have Steve for a limited time. I want to let Steve get questions and, and make comments here because – you know, he's he's someone we know doing this for a business. Steve, just feel free to jump in here if you have any questions. Sure. Uh, the one thing, too, that, that benefits this industry uh, from cryptocurrencies uh, is privacy. So mm-hmm. when you buy a Glock 19 with your credit card, there's not only the 4473 that you'll ultimately do, which is, you know, for government compliance, but the credit card company has your name, age, you know, date of birth, mm-hmm. and you know all that information, and then they know exactly what you just bought, mm-hmm. and they sell that data. That in fact, that that information is extremely valuable, mm-hmm. and it, it's it's actually you know highly behavioral, um, and they also correlate that data with other data points like your location and everything else that your phone. <clears throat> excuse me, is constantly beaming. So cryptocurrencies also give you uh, inc- incredibly more privacy mm-hmm. in your transactions. And as a result of that, you 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 will not have your, your behavior and your data uh, being bought and sold Use by it, yeah. nameless parties. Mm-hmm. Like, like it's happening on social media and stuff like that. Um, and think of the integration there too, the integration mm-hmm. between your social media and the fact that you just bought a Glock 19. Uh-huh. I mean, <clears throat> this is this is, I mean, it, it, you know, pre- predictable analytics and things like mm-hmm. that. I mean, these these things are real because of the data streams that mm-hmm. they're plugged into. Yeah. So let me ask this, because for, for a lot of folks out there that don't know, including myself, uh, where to start? And I would try to ask. Uh, I'm going to start with with Rich here and let him jump in. How did you get into this, Rich, if you can, real quick? And then I'll, I'll find out from Steve and Rob. How did you, what was your first time getting into cryptocurrencies? Okay, so we're talking about mining Bitcoin, and I guess it was almost 10 years ago now. Uh, so a buddy of mine was talking about it. I started looking into it, and I was like, wow, I could make money by doing tech stuff, and I like doing tech stuff. So I actually built uh, a mining rig, uh, two motherboards, four video cards, each one with custom-built liquid-cooled water blocks and a Ford Fiesta radio <laughs> <Okay>. and a <laughs> and 
tanks putting out like you know 1500 BTUs. So when I was yeah. in Minnesota, it was heating the house, you know. Mm. So there was a side benefit to that. Um, it's you know it's techy, it's interesting. So the thing that people have to understand, like I work for a company now, I don't even see a check. I don't get a check. I don't go to the bank and cash a check. All that happens is there's some mystical transaction out there. Could be Bitcoin, could be Tusk, could be anything. And all of a sudden, I can buy things on Amazon and they get delivered to my house. Mm -hmm. So the whole, as much faith as we have in the American dollar in that EFT transfer from, you know, the company I work for to my bank to Amazon, that's how Bitcoin, Tusk, all of this other stuff works. And I think we need to start understanding that it's not all that complicated, just like I had to get a bank account, a credit card, whatever. You get a Bitcoin wallet, a Tusk wallet, and then the retailer, like if I buy from the Hank Strange FFL, Hank Strange has a wallet just like I do. And if I have a firearm sent to you and I you know, do the financial transaction with you, Boom, it's all set. Or, you know, I buy something you want to sell me, that Henry uh, rifle for $900 <laughs> that's right. out of my price range. Mm -hmm. I, I could just say, okay, I'm sending you the money now. I'll come over and pick it up on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And it's just that simple. People, it's really not a complicated thing. Um, I, I think... Well, in fact, all the banks are actually going to a blockchain-based accounting system. Okay. So whether you think or don't think you're transacting through a blockchain, you actually are. Okay. All right. That's So that... the thing about all of this mm -hmm. is, like Steve was saying, the bank isn't going to F you when it sees you're buying and selling Glocks or SHTF-50s or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Your data isn't going to get sold. You're not going to be on a list. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, like if, if you're afraid of selling um, something and getting a chargeback, there's no chargeback. There's no clawback on the finances. Mm -hmm. So that that's a big deal. And, you know, like my corner FFL, anybody's corner FFL, their, their credit card processing company could cut them off any time for any reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like if the two bad guys come in and buy guns, like two known bad guys, but they clear the background check, mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, those guys were terrorists or fill in the blank, and they're like, you're, you're supplying firearms to terrorists, mm -hmm. and that's it. You're done. Chase Manhattan's no longer going to process your credit card. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, very interesting. Um, Steve, with you, how did you first get into this? Uh, tangentially, you know, just like most things. I, I, uh, I had read a few articles about it uh, uh, in, in, in a more techy kind of uh, uh, article, and um, it piqued my curiosity. I've always used uh, encryption and uh, just in communications and, and those, those types of affairs. So when I saw um, you know, this, this, uh, uh, applying a, encryption to transactions, you know, it, it, and making the transactions themselves, you know, a, a long chain of these encryption of these, uh, encrypt, encrypted pairs, you know, um, it, it, uh, it, it definitely piqued my curiosity. And then as I learned more about it, I, I never mind any of it or anything like that, but the gatekeepers, of Bitcoin at that particular point in time, because nobody really and nobody fully understood it. You know, the, the barrier to entry and the you know things like that was much lower. I mean, so you could you know buy it on eBay, you mm -hmm. know, with PayPal before anybody knew what the heck you were doing. Mm -hmm. And of course, the price of Bitcoin at that particular point in time was concomitant with something of low value. Um, so that's how I, I I got into it. But then as I started to understand more about it. Um, it, it, it just it it seemed like that silver bullet that that you know freedom is great and mm -hmm. and 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 it's what God gave us and if you don't believe in God it's a function of your humanity uh, and and so people human action is is buying and selling and it's exchange of ideas mm -hmm. and the more you limit that and draw geopolitical boundaries around it and the, and the more you uh, tax it so that you get less of it, the more you extinguish human spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and that 
you know, on the, on a, on a hundred thousand feet level, you know, philosophical level Mm -hmm. is what is so attractive about it. Um, and and uh, that's one of the reasons I wanted to offer it as a, as, a, as a, you know, put my money where my mouth is kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I wanted to offer people the ability to purchase, um, uh, you know, with that uh, that medium. OK. All right. Uh, I'm going to give you a chance, Rob. How did you how did you uh, get involved with this? I'm curious. I've never done any of this stuff, even ha- after having uh, spoken to you, I'm trying to, I want to sit down and wrap my head around it and maybe dip my toe in the water, put a couple of bucks out there and do it. How did you get into this? So I, I've known about Bitcoin or I had known about Bitcoin for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I was like a, a lot of people, I was, you know, very suspicious about it. And I didn't like some of the early promoters, like the people I was, that were really kind of you know, telling people to buy Bitcoin, it's the future. We're like these guys, like literally living in their mom's basements. And I don't take financial advice from people living in their mom's basements. Just mm-hmm. not a good practice, I found. Um, and so I was always a little suspicious about it. And, you know, I can, and then it was like $12. And I, I think I got into it or started learning about it when it was like $8 roughly. Mm-hmm. So much later than what Steve, you know, kind of came into it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, finally, um, I started meeting. I once started going to some crypto meetups in in the Salt Lake area, and I met some people that were really smart, not just like crazy like like liberty type activists, but guys that were really really dialed in. And they explained it to me, and I started getting closer to it. And I'm like, so basically, I had a guy that held my hand, and my wife and I threw some money in it to invest in some different crypto projects, not just Bitcoin, but a bunch of other ones. Um, and it was kind of funny, and that was a whirlwind because that was in man i didn't even start investing in crypto until 2017 so i'm a latecomer okay. um but i'm an early but once um, but i also like to dive deep into new things um mm-hmm. and every time i've dived into something so literally from the time i first got my first crypto six months later we had already started a new, our own crypto project i pulled a team together and so i, I take deep dives and okay. i jump in head first um mm-hmm. and and that's what we did with crypto so i was a latecomer into crypto i knew about it but i didn't actually pull the trigger on it till you know probably early 2017 okay Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.